heaven releases judgment in favor of people who have made a covenant with God through their offerings. So Abraham was asked for specific offerings by God. The things that he was supposed to offer. And when he gave those offerings, then God appeared and took the offering. There are those who, the bands of the air, they were against it. They wanted to eat the offering, but Abraham made sure and guarded the offering well. Then after God consuming and taking the offering, he said, no for sure. So God has now assured him, no for sure your descendants will suffer 400 years in the land that is not theirs, but I will bring them here after 400 years. So God has given his word. He has given assurance in the way of the covenant through the offering. So offering is a way of commitment to the one that you have heard. Remember, uh, uh, when you receive the word and, uh, and you commit yourself to the word, you have to release the part of your life. And hovering represents part of your life. You release it to God in partnership with the word, in agreement of the word that you have received. And that is what Abraham did from God. So there was assurance. So this time, God does not tell him, now come, I show you the weed or I show you the sun as an assurance. He asked for offering as a way to assure Abraham. So Abraham had to commit himself in obedience in following God. Now we have come to chapter 17. Now God appeared to Abraham. That time Abraham was not as old as he is. At chapter 17. The word begins by saying when Abraham was 99 years old. Old. Not when he was 75 years. Now he is 99 years old. And then God appeared. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Almighty God. Look at how God introduces himself. I am Almighty God. Let us go back to 15. You see how God introduces himself now at that time. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abraham. So this time God is not saying anything. The title, he just appears and says, fear not, Abraham, I'm your shield. So he has introduced himself as a shield and his greatest reward. So he has introduced himself as a shield there and the great reward. Is the shield of Abraham. So Abraham, fear not. Fear not. But in seven, uh, verse 17, God brings another authority to Abraham. Why is God is speaking to Abraham in 17 differently than the way he was speaking in 15? In 15, God is like introducing Abraham to some things that he needed to know. 14, he has connected him with priesthood. Now he has come to him now, 15, to show him the promise. How to walk with his word. How to follow the direction of his word. And he introduces him the way of sacrifice, the way of giving and Abraham now is walking. Apart from tithing, he is now introduced to an offering. Bring this as an offering. So God is introducing Abraham to a full life of worship. Stage by stage. We know God things by revelation. We move from one level of life to another. Stage by stage. We know God. Now, in 17, in 15, there was a bit of he was old, but not very old. But in chapter 17, he has become very old. So the hope is gone. More faith is required here to believe the word of God. If Abraham was saying, how would I be sure? Then he showed the heaven. 
when he was a baby younger. So he has waited to see those stars become his children. Years have gone by until he has staggered out of faith. He has slept with the house elf. He has a son. This time, Membi is more reluctant but the promise he thinks the son that he has gotten will be enough. But God comes again, tells Abraham, I am Almighty God. God who has all power. God who has every authority that you need. Capable of doing anything. You can imagine. I carry every mighty. I am almighty God. So, when is this? When he is 99 years old. Then God say, walk before me, perfectly, blamelessly, be holy. You are supposed to be habitually upright before me. So, Abraham, though you are rich 99, still, <laughs> I am the almighty God. Don't be carrying any form of blame. I can do anything. So, in this <laughs> time, God does not just appear to Abraham and tell him, I am the Almighty. Walk before me blameless. He introduces something to him. Maybe that is what he was waiting for, his life to be complete and his walk to be complete before God. In verse 2, he tells him, and I will make my covenant. Look at the ones. My covenant. He not say, I, I will make a covenant. He say, my covenant. Between me and you. So after I have made my covenant, this is what is contained in my covenant. This is what is contained in my covenant with you. I will multiply you exceedingly. I will multiply you exceedingly. So as impotent as you look, as hot as you may appear, as worthless as you may look, I have the power within me to multiply you exceedingly. I can make you great. I have the power to fulfill what I said. No matter how you appear and how you look, I have a covenant. So I want you to understand a covenant is an agreement between two people or even more. Promising to do certain things or fulfill certain promises or obligations under certain conditions. So God is giving Abraham some conditions. He tells him, walk before me blamelessly. Be upright before me. Walk before me wholeheartedly. Then I have a promise that I will fulfill. And the promise that God is giving Abraham his time is to multiply him exceedingly. So in covenant, I want you to understand this, the power of the strong is made available to the weak. The power of the strong is made available to the weak. When the power of the strong is made available to the weak, the weak become strong. So the purpose of the covenant is to protect the weak. To protect the weak. 
So God being a strong God want to protect us from our own unbelief or our own shortcomings. That is why he makes a covenant. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 17, the Bible says to make it sure to the heir of the promise to more to remove him beyond any doubts. That's what God desired to do. He made a covenant. I quote direct from the word. Accordingly, God also, in his desire, desire of God, to show more convincingly and beyond doubt to those who were to inherit the promise, the unchangeableness of his purpose and plan intervened or mediated with an host. So the, the purpose of the covenant there clearly demonstrates it is the desire of God to show the heir of the promise unchangeableness in his purpose and plan. Those who shall inherit the promise. So it's to protect them from their doubts. To protect them from their doubts. To prove to them that what he is saying is true. And what he is saying is, is going to be accomplished or being fulfilled. That is why he intervenes with an oath. Otherwise, he would have left it open. But he gives it an oath to assure. To assure who? The heir of the promise. So when you have become the heir of the promise, he assures you by the, by the covenant that I am going to do what I promise, that I cannot run away from my word. The word of God is a covenant. That's why we call it Old Testament and New Testament. Testament. All of them testament is a covenant. So it's a covenant itself. It has a vow by itself. So God has vowed to do what he has, has, been, he has promised. You can, God cannot run away from his own word. God cannot run away from his own word. That's where the Bible says he has elevated his word more than his own name. He has elevated his word more than his own name. So God has the responsibility of following and doing what he has promised that he will do. So he cannot run away from his word. He cannot run away from his promise. That is why he, 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 he makes a vow or he has made a covenant to show that he is able to do that or he has he has the intention of doing what he promised that he is going to do so in the covenant god makes his power available to us as weak people so his power is made available to us by the covenant so god tells abraham though you are 99 years old though you are embodied i am almighty god i am the giver of power i can empower you i can make you become a father of many nations and now he avails his power to abraham by the covenant even when he appeared and he, uh, in chapter 18 again we see him appearing and says next year the time of life i am going to return and Sarah is going to have a son. This is what God is promising now. Sarah hears those ones and loves her. And then God tells him, or the angel of God tells him, I am the Lord. Is there anything to earn for me? Is there anything that I cannot do? So I want you to say the power of the strong is not available to the weak until there is a covenant. That is why even Jesus himself, after the covenant
covenant. This is a time we promise power. I said the power will come. The promise will come. So the, the, the spirit comes to empower us. And we are in a covenant. We are talking about the spirit who is the zeal of the new covenant. So the power is available to the weak. The power of the strong. The power of the almighty God was made available to weak Abraham. The power of the almighty God was meant to the weak Abraham to empower him to do the things that he could not do due to his weaknesses, due to his in the body that was old, the body that was old at that time, there are things he could not do by nature. He was ruled out that he could not father a child. He could not be a child. The wife was too old to have a child. But God tells him, I am making a covenant with you. And he involves Sarah also in the covenant. And Sarah shall no longer be called Sarai. She shall be called Sarah because I have made the covenant with her. I have made a, a, a mother of many nations. The strength of the strong is available to the weak. The weak are able to get the power from the strong.